the uh, theaterartsguild.com uh, has like a now playing kind of calendar. But essentially, I think right now there is uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf um, going on at the Omaha Community Playhouse. Um, and uh, there's a possibility of like rush tickets for that bought um, from the box office on the day of the show. Uh, also, uh, Calendar Girls at Snap, uh, which is walking distance from the element, actually, uh, that has its tag night out. And what that is, it's the Theater Arts Guild Scholarship Night. So uh, dona a donation to tag will admit you to uh, watch Calendar Girls down there. Um, and let's see. I think we're seeing about uh, possibly uh, spam a lot has preview that night but of course they have to give the tickets to the donors first so we're going to see if there might be a couple of you know straggler tickets that we could have here um let's see so yeah that's thursday and uh, also you know the the play slam box is down there like i said you know one uh single submissions uh the number of copies that you need for readers face down um and uh let's see and then also about tomorrow uh kevin had just yeah, um, tomorrow uh, is one of those days where the um, dinner time, it, it's kind of one of those long days. I think we have you scheduled to go over to the Joslin Museum, and there's some dinner over there. And uh, so I don't know if they have arranged a stop back at the hotel or not. So you might want to just think ahead a little bit in terms of bringing stuff and into the evening to see the evening show. But um, there'll be tomorrow's reception at the um, Joslin is for a lot of the people who have donated money to help all of us be here. So it's a great time to kind of sick all of you onto them to uh, <laughs> let them know if you, if you feel comfortable, please let them know how your experience is going and um, and what you think of this week, because it's a great time for them to actually hear what their donations are helping to uh, achieve. So, and it's a it's a fun little party that happens beforehand too. So, and a pretty good play after I hear too. So. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's all right. <laughs> um. Also, um, as you guys know, I, unfortunately with the play labs, we have to stack them three deep uh, in order to fit them all. Um, but, and each year, somebody usually, uh, a player usually points, is the point person to create a method of sharing that with all that. So we do have a, a Dropbox set up. Um, Matt started, and he and I are the editors on it. So if you want to participate, um, email me the most current version of, of the script that you would like to share from this year, um, and we'll put it on there, and then you guys will have access to, to download and read as you like. Um, so yeah, so if you want to participate, send it to me. That'll be like your approval. And then I'm going to include all of your actual emails uh, when I kind of send the information out so you guys can have each other's emails that way. And if you want me to, to hide it, let me know, and I'll hide it too. But um, So yeah, I think that kind of sums it up. So uh, we've got our panel today is uh, meeting our design wing. So I'll go ahead and hand it over to uh, Eliza Ben, who will be moderating today. Take it away, guys. Well, hello. Uh, let's just get, let's just dive right in. Um, I thought that it would be nice to start, we were chatting a little bit last night uh, discussing what we would talk about today. We had a pre-conversation conversation, um, <laughs> and we talked a little bit about how sometimes it's a little bit tricky explaining what exactly the design wing is to the folks here at the conference. So let's, let's dive in. I, I don't think we necessarily need to do bios or anything like that because you all have the big book, nice glossy pages. You can look in there. Um, but if it does come up organically, of course, please say what your metier is. But yeah, what is the design wing? Break it down. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the most important thing that we're here to do is just to be a part of the community um, and to dive in and talk to people about uh, their plays, about their readings, about uh, obviously about the main stage plays that we're all uh, working on and we'll have visual responses to later in the week. But um, just to, to become a part of the group and, and a part of the discussions in all the different readings. Uh, I think it's really important uh, 
for us and for playwrights, I believe, because uh, it's not a thing that usually we get the opportunity to do. And um, I know a lot of us are really interested in being a part of works from the beginning. Uh, and we get, usually get brought on so late in the process mm -hmm. um, that we don't get to have these kind of conversations where it's not specifically about our discipline. And it's these more, these broader, more um, just gut instinct visual responses. We don't get to have these conversations with, um, even amongst ourselves often. Um, and I think that's something that's really important for this design wing. Yeah, I think um, when we hear and meeting you guys, seeing you face to face to hear about your story and, and to know about you individually, it really gives us a, another depth of the story that you create, even though I heard some people disagree with it, but like for me, it's very important to know the creator. And it's like, for I hope for you guys, it's important to know who we are, too. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> How do you it's hard, that? hard to top that one. Uh, but uh, I think what we really want to do is, like they said before, get, get in on the ground floor and really help you as playwrights and directors find the tone of your play, which is something I learned this week, <laughs> and, uh, and really help be collaborators and creators. It's, it's always exciting for us to work on new works, because then our voices are heard just as much as yours, and it makes your guys' lives a lot easier, I think. I would agree with everything that's been said so far. I think also there's a danger, there's a danger within ourselves as designers and also within the theater community at large to think of designers as technicians mm -hmm. and not as creators. Whereas really I think there is, there's a communication, there's a conversation to be had on the creative level that designers love, love, love to participate in. That I think is, uh, is something that I, that I would think that we as a community can work on. I'll just add that I think um, it, it's really great to, to have the designers here and talk with the playwrights and with the directors. And, and it's really, you know, it, it voices a change in how we're producing and how we're looking at work and how we create work in, in, in a, you know, more holistically collaborative environment. So I'm just thrilled and, um, and I've been loving having the conversations with the playwrights and with the directors and, and just being able to have um, what is a more primary conversation as opposed to a, a, a solve the problem kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that, that's, I just can't speak highly enough about, uh, about this process here at, at uh, Great Plains and what that's, what that's bringing to uh, how we produce theater and moving forward. So. Great, yeah. yeah, and I think it would be apropos to mention Justin Townsend was the, one of the. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so absolutely. So, and I think that uh, what Eliza says is great. So Justin Townsend and, and um, Kevin Lawler really sort of put this process together four years ago or so, and um, and really recognizing the the fact that this needs to be uh, a, a part of how we work and, and push forward in the future. So, I'm yeah. interested that you a, a number of you sort of touched on this idea of the primary conversation and responding in like a visual or even an emotional way and getting in at the ground floor. Can you tell me a little bit more, talk a little bit more, even just specifically like different projects where that's been a particularly fruitful conversation at the start? Or, or is, that, is that not usually the case? <laughs> <laughs> um, this week it's the case, <laughs> um, which is amazing. And I think that's something that I want to try to pull into my life more. Uh, and it, there's times, I do think though, unfortunately, it's, uh, there was like the, they talked about the playwright and the director being in a relationship earlier this week, and the, to me sometimes the designer is like the tag along best friend, or the third wheel sometimes, and it comes in a little bit late, and, and sometimes those conversations are already, already underway, and it's kind of hard to backpedal, you're going to lose time or lose momentum if you backpedal. Um, so it's just important for us to, I believe, uh, as like a scenic designer to come in with strong visual responses that even if the conversations have already started, that hopefully you can spark even more and build on top of that. I, I think also that the art form that we're all involved in is such a collaborative effort 
um, once we get into the theater. And um, what, what I think is uh, helpful often is the earlier we can be involved in the process, the earlier we can be involved in the creative side of a piece, um, the more fruitful the ultimate result is because Again, it is. It's a collaborative effort, and the more brains in the room that are working together and fighting together and sort of figuring it out, I think that it becomes a more complicated and exciting piece. Yeah, I, I uh, personally come from a collective creation background, and so, you know, uh, a lot of the most, in terms of specific times where being a designer in on the ground level, as it were, uh, of a project. Some of the most valuable collaborations that I've been a part of have been when I've been in the room from the get-go, so that we can talk the entire ensemble, including a playwright, uh, can talk about the kernel of the piece and how it can grow into the fully-fledged performance that it is, to the point where I can come in with not just visual responses to, to, uh, to the ideas, but also concrete elements. And we can play with those and move back and forth and see how a space can generate an idea that can generate text, that can generate lighting, that can generate a plot, that can move all the way through that in a seamless way. Not seamless, collective creation is very difficult. But um, <laughs> that idea that there is a conversation back and forth so that it isn't, yeah. Was there a particular like show that you're thinking of from this collective that you worked with where? Yeah, um, there was a show called Fathom, which uh, this was with, with my theater company called Sabouge Theater. Um, this was a while ago. But uh, we created this show called Fathom, and we based it off of the combination of the, a playwright's short story about um, a mother whose son uh, discovered he could breathe underwater, and put that, and then took also from The Fatal Shore, which is a, a big historical book about uh, transportation off to Tasmania and Australia, um, and sort of merged those two tales so that it sort of, it was, a, it was a whole arc that's more complicated than I can probably describe in the time of this panel, but in terms of my collaboration with it, <clears throat> I would bring in set elements to start working with levels and how that can interact with, with the actors. And um, we crafted a whole uh, underwater, how to, how to basically see somebody swimming underwater on stage that was, I don't think, could have been built without the back and forth of, with the performers and with the playwright herself. It seems like there's a general consensus among the panel uh, talking last night and talking today that, uh, that designers generally want to be part of the process sooner, as soon as possible, you know, from the get-go, at the spark, at the initiation. Um, what are some ways that you think playwrights and directors and maybe even artistic directors, <laughs> what, what are some ways that, that, that we can be better about bringing you in first and or are there ways that you can be better about getting in from the ground floor? I know that I have to, I actively seek out um, people that um, I can collaborate with to, um, I'm friends with several other playwrights obviously and I'm making a lot of new ones. Um, <laughs> and I, when they ask me, will you read this? I, I, and when I know they're creating something, I'll actively ask them if they want me to read it. And a lot of the times I know I'm not gonna get this is not something. This is something I'm doing because I want to be involved, not necessarily because I want. I know I'm gonna. It's gonna have a through line to a job, and um, at, and at times that's very difficult. And I know that the model. There's a. There's the model isn't really set up for that right now, um, and I. I the don't new play development model, you mean? Uh, or the kind of some of the, the producing models are not mm -hmm. really set up for that, and for us to be involved for so long, um, and. I guess it really is kind of at, at the moment, it's up to us to seek it out and um, to be sought out, I guess. Um, and I don't really have a solution. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was lucky enough to be join a new musical 
uh, since last year is opening this July, but they have been decided they want me to be on board. And then since the very beginning, when they write the first draft, they brought me in, they asked me to read it, asked what my response is, and then every two months I would get a new draft. And I just keep having new ideas, and then are we, are we on the same track, or is it, are we going too far? So it really is depends on different productions and different situations, I feel. Mm. I feel like designers uh, are a lot of times open and, and, and creative across the spectrum, but some people have styles, uh, just like directors have styles and a lot of playwright, playwrights uh, like to work with certain directors. And I think maybe not a solution, but a through line could be if more playwrights that work with certain directors and those directors work with certain designers, you kind of build a family there mm -hmm. and, and then whether it, it may, that doesn't mean that I'm going to be your scenic designer or lighting designer, but I can be a design uh, yeah, yeah, consultant or, yeah, Res or, or a resource. resource yeah. 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 And maybe that's five different scenic designers and you're just getting different point of views. Um, Cause I mean, some of my favorite parts of plays are reading the beautifully painted script uh, descriptions of the scenes. Mm -hmm. And I think that could go even, even crazier and like, I wouldn't want people to hold back anything, and I think they could go crazier if we started from the ground floor. And I by no means do I mean to suggest, let us now solve the issues yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in making a, but yeah. sometimes it's, it's, I think we probably all kind of know deep down what the issues are, and it's yeah. nice to sort of imagine or talk about some ways that we can actively pursue to, to mm -hmm. uh, um, change those those yeah. challenges. And I, th I think designers could also go to play rats and be like, I have a cool idea, but I'm not going to write it. So <laughs> <laughs> you need to write it, and then let's let's make a play. So I think exactly what's going on here. We're having bringing the designers in, having these reading uh, these readings, and um, involving them in, in the readings is a really great first step. And uh, really great. I mean, it's, it has a very solid foundation and uh, model that I'd love to see expanded and uh, and worked on more uh, universally across the country. So. I think it's, it's what's, you know, the genesis of, of what's going on here is really important. Yeah, I also think that, th and this was touched on earlier in the week in one of these panels, that more collaboration within universities among the different departments, I think, would help with it a lot. Because I know, I, I go to school at NYU, I'm going into my third year at the, in the grad program, and we have a creative writing uh, uh, school that the design school doesn't talk to at all. And I think that that's a, I've, I've said to many of you, I think that it's a shame. And um, I wish that more universities uh, were more inclusive among the disciplines. Like I've got really lucky, some of the people that I, I've, I actively seek out to read their new plays are were former classmates of mine. Like I have a friend that just sent me a draft last night. My friend Nathalie sent me a draft of a play she's writing about Alaskan fishermen. Cause she and she, because she's like, I want to design eye on this because I, my my visual sense is I'm I'm having some trouble and and that collaboration on started in a, an academic setting where we got lucky enough to find each other and we have similar s sensibilities so we um it, it's it can start in an academic setting or it can start in rooms like this and it would be great if there were more rooms like this um because this is one of the best experiences I've had in a my theater career. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Great Plains Theater Conference. I'm curious too, I mean we talked a little bit about I guess what uh, sort of the different processes that you all bring to a particular piece. Um, for, for, for the naysaying playwright or director who's like, mm, I don't want to work with a designer. I guess, <laughs> like, I mean, one of the, I mean, li it's actually one of the questions that we talked about last night, but what does a designer bring to the process? Why should an artistic director think, yes, gosh darn it, I need to get a designer into the room at the get-go? What does that bring? Well, I mean, it brings conflict, right? Like, we, we come in with something new, something different. We have fresh mm -hmm. eyes on it. And we have our own ideas that we walk into the into a meeting, a first meeting, a design meeting with, and or, or you know, hopefully in the future, into reading scripts just for playwrights for uh, very early uh, drafts, and um, in the same way that 
uh, when a director and a playwright sit down together and hash out what they both think they see and want out of their out of this script, out of this play that they're bringing to a uh, company, uh, I think that we do the same thing, and but we do it much later, generally. And um, yeah, so I, th I think that it's the same sort of uh, interaction, It's just it just happens later. I, th I think conflict uh, is a great word, and, and it's really the, instead of a straight line with a director and a playwright, now you have a triangle and three minds to bounce things off of. And then when the playwrights and the director start to argue, which is great, um, <laughs> Then you could be a, a mediator or someone to argue a third point with, and and then things things grow from that. It's it's kind of boring when everyone's just like, yeah, that's great, let's do that. Super so boring. super boring. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's also there's a point as a as I at least for me as a designer, you come into a new work, and it's you have all these ideas and you're kind of scared to say something because you're so far into it and you're. I'm just the designer, so mm. you know you don't yeah. <laughs> you don't want to step on anyone's toes. And I think the communication wall needs to be broken down a little bit more, and it's easier from the beginning. Yeah, I just want to build on Joe's idea. Like I was working v with Valerie on the the party play last year, and then it was a brand new play, and it, it's about a moving away party. And it was like, can we like? It's like when I suggest an idea to a playwright that's your babies and I, how can I, can we just do a lot of boxes? Is that, <laughs> does that sound too cheap for you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, but you know, and I was lucky, like the playwright was very open with this idea, but for, at least for me, I always have this, you know, this, how do you say that? Afraid to offend you in some, and the director sometimes to suggest the over the edge idea. I don't know, you should ever be afraid of offending. You know, if it's a good idea or, or the idea, put it out. I, I also think, um, I think it's important that also it, with designers and how they're trained and how they uh, approach work, that it, that it becomes more organic and, and a, a stronger process from the front through, in the through line. And that's something that, uh, you know, I, I know that I'm acutely interested in and in, in working towards and um, really sort of opening these conversations with, uh, uh, with as, as makers and writers and, and putting everyone together and, and really sort of Opening the communication lines and, uh, and the collaborative efforts, so the, to make for a stronger, a stronger uh, piece, a stronger product, uh, and a stronger experience for uh, for all. So, um, I, I, want to be I, I don't necessarily know that um, that we're addressing that training with uh, with how we train designers as fully as we should be, and, and how designers, uh, you know, where they where they find their points of interaction. So that's something that, you know, we're continuing to work on and, and try to make better and, and improve as well. Yeah. I think the reason I'm afraid of talking <laughs> to playwrights is because there's nothing established. It's so new. There's, there's not like, I know I can talk to a director whatever I want, and I know they will turn down my crazy idea sometimes, and then I'm not afraid to propose that because I know that's my job. But I don't know what is my job to the playwright. You oh. know, that I think. <laughs> well, I, and, oh. and we also, oh. as, a, as designers, we sort of, in the same way that playwrights and directors are sort of a couple in their dating and you know that metaphor on the first day of this uh, conference. Uh, we as as designers are dating our directors in in exactly that same way. <laughs> so <laughs> so there is a, a strong relationship uh, and and it grows over the course of many shows with with luck and and hard work and um, so we're less afraid of I think getting into fights with our directors than we are with. Uh, playwrights. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think playwrights playwrights want the want that relationship to grow. No, oh, I I do too. I mean, yeah. I, I think we all do. not to speak on behalf of all playwrights, <laughs> but uh, I would agree. Uh, yeah, and I think also the an important point to be made in terms of what a designer can bring to a process uh, between a director and a playwright is that designers, by nature, and I, you know, people may disagree with me on this, are visual thinkers. Like, our responses upon hearing some sort of provocation is a visual thing, which is, I think, immediately of, of value insofar as it embraces something that's ineffable, you know, that can't be put into words. And so, I think that kind of thinking brought into a process can only enrich it. Definitely. Uh, so more conflict, more over the edge ideas, less I'm just the designer <laughs> and throwing the hands up, uh, and more playwright uh, designer 
chit-chats, interactions, yeah. relationships, as it might be in this uh, love triangle paradigm that we've talked about. Let's open it up a little bit to the, to the audience, shall we? Um, one of the thoughts last night was what does, does, does the audience have suggestions or questions for, the, for these designers here or anything that we've talked about today? Don't be shy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, you are. It's the long, painful walk. <laughs> the walk of shame. <laughs> okay, well, first of all, thank you guys very much. Um, so I, I'm feeling in my own work and even a little bit how we try to structure the conference and my own theater work, my own design work, and my own playwriting work, um, pressures coming from uh, socioeconomic forces and even environmental forces that seem to be crushing a lot of the established structure of society right now. Coming into the theater, coming into my work, um, coming into all our work that are changing those long standing traditional structures that we once fit into. So now we see a lot of talk and a lot of action, actually, about working deeper with the community to create work, works of theater, um, uh, that whole area. So are you guys feeling these huge pressures of class, of uh, um, economics, of environment, of all those things, and the way that's changing the dynamics of how we produce theater? Are you feeling that in how you, you're you going about design, how you're looking at design, how you're looking at, maybe because you guys are all kind of getting, sort of getting started mm -hmm. at what you might be thinking about where you want to go or new ideas about where you might want to go? Um, I recently graduated from Virginia Tech, the MFA program there, and our, our directing program is a directing and public dialogue program. So we are all about, that. that's the world that we, um, our academic studies were in was in a world of community building and, and community engagement with theater and um, so uh, when I ended up at school it was a big reevaluation of how I wanted to make theater and how I thought about theater um, as a on, on just a really very large scale for me um, and it has su uh, influenced a lot of what I'm doing and where what I'm actively seeking out for theater and and I think a lot of my desire to get in on the ground floor on in projects now and getting into new works is is based off of that kind of community engagement that is um, not necessarily taught everywhere it certainly wasn't taught at my undergrad um, and I think it's a really exciting time for us that we that we are starting to see this change happening um, and we're we just have to try and navigate it I do think that economically speaking that there's a growing sense of hitting the bottom line and I think that that's uh, deadly. What does that mean exactly, um, hitting the bottom it, line? I think that, so there are um, much, uh, there are older and much more established designers who are sort of able to throw their weight around and throw their name around and um, get what they need for a project and not have to worry about um, how much it costs or how much man hours it'll take and that we as young designers um, have to focus a lot on uh, not overspending and not over designing um, uh, a room so that we don't, so that our producers are able to um, make it work monetarily. And, and I think that that just economically is uh, a function of how the th world of theater is going and who is going to see our shows and how many people are going to see our shows. I would be curious to know what the producer-designer uh, dynamic is in this love paradigm that was talked about. Mm -hmm. oh, goodness. Just a little joke, sorry. Yeah. Uh, continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess one of the big struggles I've seen recently um, is the uh, with economics, people are no longer, it's harder to get people to come see shows. Uh, unless you're throwing big names, uh, designers, and big name actors, which is economically very expensive. 
Um, and people are staying home. They're watching, you know, they're watching the Netflix and things like that. Um, until you are producing a show that just everyone has to see, no matter what. And that's those are the kind of shows that I want to that I want to work on. And and that's why I want to work on new work so that I can be a part of making a product that you just can't turn down uh, with a with a good story and a good design and and, and great acting and, and it has great meaning behind it. And I think you, there's, you can do things, uh, you can reuse, you can recycle, you can, you can have concepts behind these shows that shouldn't, don't need to cost uh, you know, millions of dollars um, and get people away from the TVs and back in the theater. Go ahead. Uh, I, I also think that, um, again, touching on economics, is that um, part of a, a c c contemporary struggle that we're having is getting in the same room with everyone in early design meetings that um, that theater companies are finding it more and more expensive and less and less easy to get everyone out to the theater to talk in person and we're finding ourselves uh, in Skype meetings which mm -hmm. are also I, awful you're just not you're not really a part of the room then you're just on a screen so I, I actually think designers probably make very good producers. No. <laughs> no. Ooh, tell, c expound, Kip. Yeah, I just think I think that uh, I, I think that first it offers a real through line to how to making creative decisions, and then also really working on uh, on how and how to best tell the story and in, in, in using materials that uh, that do cost money. So design ultimately costs money. And um, and and so there's a real sense of, of how to spend and, and, and what you know how to prioritize and so I think that actually gives real good training for becoming a producer in that regard um, and um, and I think what Chris was saying as well also Kevin addresses your point of, of that that the stronger the collaborative environment from the from the very first step um, that that this becomes a, a a stronger financial picture as well because because you were you're not um, you, you you can make decisions and make uh, and make calls and, and and come up with structures that uh, that can reflect in the, uh, the economic reality of what it costs to produce right very very thoroughly come on, come on up in the spirit of, of collaboration you know, and, and and I hung out with you all and I adore you but um, <laughs> but you know if you want I, and, and I probably speak for a lot of the other main stage playwrights. Like, if you have ideas and you want to, you know, show them to me or to us, you know, bring them our way. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be a Friday event or whatever that is in the schedule of like, okay, here it is. You know what I mean? Like, and if you don't know something or you're like, what the hell, you know, just uh, share it. And and I'm totally open. And and yeah, that's great. That's just that's what comment. they're here to do. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. We'll meet with you later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions, yeah, yeah, yeah. offers? Um, one thing that seems interesting for like playwright director collaboration <coughs> is that there's a lot of like early career playwright groups or early career sort of uh, director fellowships. There's actor groups like The Bats in New York. I mean, is there an equivalent kind of young design group? Because it, it ends up being that those groups seem to collaborate, but from those rooms, I, ne I really never remember meeting designers, and is that because your designers get jobs faster? I'm actually, I'm not sure about that at all. Maybe that's completely not true. But like, <laughs> is there a kind of young designer organization? It's the uh, design wing at the GPTC. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, I mean, I think in answer, I, I, there have been, over the past few years, an increasing number of that kind of thing. Um, there is, for example, there's one fellowship out at Oregon Shakes. Um, that's specifically for designers. There's Lincoln Center the Directors Helmsley. Lab has just started what, a few years Helmsley ago. Helmsley also. What's that? The Helmsley. And the Helmsley, yeah. Um, Lincoln Center Directors Lab started, I think, two years ago to start taking designers into the room uh, with directors um, and making them a part of the collaboration on the, on the, on the theses that, they're, that are created in that process. Um, so yeah, they exist, but I think that it's again going back to, uh, yes, designers tend to get jobs uh, fairly rapidly on a, on a uh, craft basis, 
you know, as an electrician or as a TD or whatever. Like we have that fallback, as it were. Um, and so that's why the fellowships are not as available as they are for playwrights and, and directors. We also, as young designers, tend to get a lot of work with uh, more established designers assisting, mm -hmm. um, which is, is sort of in its own way, it's an internship. You know, you're in a room watching a great designer, a great team uh, work together and create really good pieces, and um, you're able to learn from that. So it becomes an internship because they don't pay you enough. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I actually think that um, I, I think that the, the it, there's uh, artistic directors and people running the theater companies out out in the audience that um, uh, that there could be greater support that the support is getting there, but there could be greater um, uh, initiatives to create uh, collectives and, and and opportunities and fellowships for designers and young designers to help to bring them in in more fully into uh, into the producing circle. So and you know designers oftentimes are left uh, are left as a freelance and on their own and they and it be, becomes very difficult sometimes to figure out where that next step is and how to and how to do that. So support is support is good. <laughs> More questions. Yeah. Yeah, come on up. The theme song is Money by Pink Floyd. <laughs> yeah, right, right. right, right. <laughs> I won't begin to sing it because that would be yeah, we go. <laughs> I, I have nothing to say about money. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, in, in a world in a world without money, yeah. um, oh I'm really I'm I've been thinking a lot this week about um, rehearsal, and and like I I'm like ooh I'm singing along with you guys up here, and I'm I'm wondering like what is, the um, what is the rehearsal process? What is your involvement in the rehearsal? Because we're talking a lot about early design meetings, and I've I've had the opportunity of working with a few collectives who or the designers are principal members of the collective, and they're at all the rehearsals and. We're like, you know, can you make some like dessert cart that we can like hide a human body in or something like that? Yeah, like insane things. And then they come in like later that week with a cart that does that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the, and or uh, or like I was making a show with a uh, lighting designer who was our primary collaborator, and I was like just like begging him to draft light in the room, like during the rehearsals, like like find stuff to throw light on. Like what is what is the what are the ideas that we should be experimenting with? And I'm I'm wondering if that's just like my own kind of crazy like impulses or if, is that, if that's something that sounds appealing to you that's amazing it's totally okay because <laughs> <appealing. laughs> okay, totally. I, I think sometimes like sometimes <laughs> when i have like it took me a little cajoling to get andrew to start doing this but he but i think he wanted to watch i think he wanted to respect the process that we had i think he wanted to get to know like what we were making before he started making authorial decisions and uh well i respect that well i, I appreciate that i want you know do you guys want to get in well, there? i think that's what yeah. that, that's, that's what we were talking about earlier about sort of having the permission in yeah. terms of a traditional, in terms of what one might conceive to be a traditional designer uh, role. You know what I mean? I think that I think that this entire panel would love to be in a rehearsal room, bringing things in to interact with, because I think that provides a valuable, valuable feedback on the kinesthetic scale for the performers yeah. and the director, as well as for anybody else in the room, like I think everybody gains from 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 a process like that that involves elements that are that are going to be ultimately a part of the play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Would you go, would you go crazy in rehearsal like for three weeks, watching just every night? Just watching it, not doing yeah, anything, just, just not, 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 not helping. Well, yeah, okay. We have other things to do. <laughs> um, I think it's what you're saying is fantastic and. And uh, but also keeping in mind the idea of bringing in sketches and research and and items yeah. and the directors to not be scared to rip them off the walls and be like this is crazy keep going I love it this is great this is great this sucks this sucks keep going yeah. like we don't want to just come in with your our first idea and you to be like this is perfect yeah that's what I was gonna say is I yeah. think that the fear uh, in that situation might be just uh, that the idea of sketching something in really quickly in rehearsal yeah. and then that becomes the thing yeah. that that would be that would be terrible, right? Yeah. Because well, well, then it couldn't evolve. Um, yeah. But but I think sketching something in can give you room to make something big yeah. and great and grand. Yeah, yeah and um, as a costume designer, I love to go to rehearsal to see how the director, maybe the play playwrights, and the actor to really see the characters and uh, often learn a lot from just watching them and then to learn more about that character. 
Sometimes I even was lucky enough to talk to the actors, talk to the characters that make me learn a lot more and then I feel I have, I'm more confident about my design and it's the character. Yeah, yeah. and even, in, even before that in the writing process of coming in and bringing in sketches and I mean, we're, we're, we're kind of, we're tools so we can, we can do research and then you don't have to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Bless we you. can draw <laughs> and then we can do things for you that, that we love to do. And, and then we feel like we're being useful. And then maybe by the time, before you're even casting, you already have in mind and in your descriptions, in your play, you have this is what the set could look like or maybe should look like. Um, but still leaving it open for us to be designers. And you think the designers will come if we ask you to do this, really? Because you did say you have other things to do. Well, I, I think you that, you know, we're living in a world, in this discussion yeah. right now, we're living sure. in a world without money. No, yeah. in, in a world, it's great. I'm, I'm, I live in that world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that world without money. Blissful existence. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we would hope for, like, you're definitely going to be my designer. Oh, of yeah. course. Well, I'm, think, I'm thinking in particular, I'm part of a, an ensemble called Half Straddle, yeah. and with our recent piece, we had our our sound designer we knew it had to be an integral part of the of the whole operation so he came to far more rehearsals than he normally would have because he was like live mixing stuff and trying stuff out and it was totally annoying when it didn't work but it was also incredibly helpful when it didn't work because then we knew that that wasn't the right thing and the director could move on and it was as if i'm an actor in that ensemble i should say and it was really nice as an actor to sort of hear what was being built around and then to feel like there was some live interaction mm -hmm. and my weird flute playing was a motivated thing. Moving on. Um. Well, I, I do, you know, I will say that it is a model in uh, England to have the designers in the room for a great, a much greater part of the rehearsal process. Mm -hmm. And I had the uh, great pleasure of uh, talking with Polly Constable who lit uh, uh, the curious incident of the dog in the night, and she was in rehearsal every day from the beginning. So if there is the money there for us to be there, then definitely we want to be a part of it. Um, it's just, it's, it's a model that isn't really supported well in America. Yeah. I got the cue. Yeah. It's, we're done. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. More conflict, more everything. Thank you. <laughs>